Hi. Okay, we are alive. Someone's saying hi from Ohio. So we're good. Great. Hi, Ohio. Um, so this is actually the thing you're seeing right now is a some of the original art from Old MacDonald had a baby. And this is about the size it is. You can see like my hands. And if you look closely, you can see that I use ink and watercolor and pencil. And I'm gonna share a little bit more about that in a little bit. But first I wanted to just actually like show my face and say, hi, <laughs> how's it going? Um, so my name is Kate by Steele and I write and draw picture books. And where's the book that I'm sharing with you today? I'm sitting on it. This is the book that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. It's called Old MacDonald Had a Baby. And I illustrated this book. It's uh, published with um, Fiewell and Friends, which is an imprint of Macmillan. And um, it's written by Emily Snape. And this came out in, I think it was November of last year. And um, I love this book because I feel like this is one of the first books that I got to do that I just really had a ton of fun with. And I had a ton of fun building the visual narrative for the book. So I wanted to talk about that with you all today. I wanted to share some of the original art from the book with you today. And I also wanted to draw with you all. Um, while we wait for a couple of other people to join, I thought that maybe we would start just by doing a really quick drawing together. So I have a piece of paper right here and I'm just gonna grab a pen that I like drawing with. So grab something to write with or something to draw with. And while we're waiting for everyone to join, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to draw this baby. So the thing about this baby, we can look at the baby over here. What would you say, hmm, actually let's look at it over here. It's got this like kind of, one of my friends described the baby as kind of looking like a toad. <laughs> and I think what she said when she said that was that it kind of has no neck. It's just kind of all one piece. So when I'm drawing this baby, I had a couple of ways that I used to draw it when um, I first started drawing it. And one way was to uh, just think about this head shape. So its head is basically like a half circle. And then its eyes, this baby's eyes are two half circles inside that circle. You put a dot for each of the eyeballs. And do you see how already just by one shape, two shape, and then two dots, um, we have something kind of going on over here. All right, the baby has these sort of like sticky outy ears on either side. And it's got a nose that's kind of like a little pig nose right in the middle. It's not really a pig nose. If you've drawn with me before and you've drawn Pip, um, you know that I draw pig noses in a different way. But basically it's a little upturned nose. And the thing that I love about drawing babies is that their proportions are so um, funny compared to an adult's proportions. So the nose is always kind of like right between the eyes and it's squished up. And then let's have this baby be smiling. I like that smile. That smile isn't like a huge smile. It's just sort of like the baby turned and saw someone that they recognized and uh, they're pretty happy about it. So I'm gonna do three hairs on the top of the head because that's what our baby has. And um, I think I'm going to have my baby sitting, so I'm just imagining that this page, like, I know its butt has to be down here, so let me just make that general shape of where the baby's going to be, but I also know that I want to have these hands over here. I know this doesn't look like anything right now, and I can't, I'm not going to walk you through exactly what I'm thinking over here, but I know that I want the baby to be holding something. And then I'm also going to stick a couple of feet over here. Okay. 
And what do you think the baby should be singing right now? Could the baby be saying? Or like, so the baby isn't actually saying anything, but the baby is holding up a sign. What could that sign be saying? Let's think. So the baby is, let's think about this. The baby's happy to see you, right? Um, uh, okay, so in, um, there's this, uh, I, I went to Malaysia a couple of years ago and the greeting like literally translates when you're talking to someone and you're saying hello to someone, the first thing you say to them is have you, it translates roughly to like, have you eaten yet? That's like a way to say hello. So maybe since the baby has seen you, I'm going to say have. Because maybe the baby is going to cook you something to eat. I don't know. You can write whatever you want there. But basically, here's our welcome. And here's our, here's our baby. Okay. So I wanted to share again the book with you. And something that I wanted to do was actually walk you all through. I'm not going to read the book or do a read aloud. But I wanted to walk through some of my favorite parts of the book. Because I think that there are a lot of hidden drawings in this book, or at least when I made all the drawings for this book, there were a lot of things that I wanted to slip in that um, I didn't really like, that weren't actually written as part of the story. So I think a great example that we can start with when we look at this are the these parts, the end sheets. So when you take the cover, when you open up the cover of the book, these are, this is what glues the actual book to the cover. They're called end sheets. And sometimes um, something, some, something that you'll see in books is that the end sheets on the front might be different from the end sheets on the back. And since this book is about this baby and all of this community that sort of helps raise the baby, I wanted to show um, basically like everyone but I wanted it to kind of be, throughout the book, you see a lot of framed images and I wanted to show, um, I'll explain that in a little bit. You see a lot of pictures hanging on the wall and I wanted to have almost like a record of everyone who lives in the house, like kind of their baby pictures. So here's one of the dads. That's one of the dads you see mostly throughout the book. And then here's like the dog as a puppy, the cat as a kitten, the bat as a baby bat, the owl as an owlet. Everyone's on here. Then you go all the way to the back and you see all the animals kind of grown up except for the baby who's still a baby right okay so let's take a look through here oh, mcdonald had a baby so here's another drawing i got to slip in this was kind of funny because i felt like the diaper is way too big for that baby but it's fine here are the dads and if you look on this first spread here are all of a bunch of portraits of everyone all around the house. So um, a little bit about me. I grew up um, in a little town in Massachusetts in a very, very old house. And my parents actually had an antique shop. And in the antique shop, you know, because we had this antique shop, we had a lot of antiques around the house too. And this lamp was a lamp that we had. And this dresser was a dresser that I had. And then there are a bunch of other things that I added in. Um, this changing, this thing that's actually being used as a changing table over here wasn't something that we had, but I was looking, when I made this book, I was looking at a lot of images from farmhouses. So a lot of antiques and things like that. And then one thing I wanted to share was as these characters are coming in, so here's the cat, the dog, the dad, the baby, I was thinking a lot about how to make these as drawings as funny as possible. And the way that I think about it is like, I think about it as like a joke unfolding over time. So you start with over here, the baby is, has grabbed a bowl and has put a spoon in the bowl. And the cat is like trying to get the dad's attention by pulling on his shirt. The dog has his hand, his paws on his hips, he's talking to the dad. No one else sees what's going on. But the cat can sense 
something bad is about to happen. Now, if you look on the next page, because your eyes go from left to right when you're reading, if you're reading in English, when you're reading a book that's in English, here, uh, this happens, and then this happens, and then you turn the page, and you go from left to right. The dad is starting to notice now. The dog is on it. The dog has the everything to clean up. And then what happens over here? The baby has gotten stuff all over the place. And then who showed up at the door? The chicken. Okay, so I'm going to show you another aspect. So I'm thinking a lot about this in terms of like, how would you watch a movie? Your eyes would, you know, because it's a piece of paper, the image is not going to change, but you kind of are the camera with your eyes. So again, moving from left to right, the cat who's grimacing, the dog who's watching something, the chicken who's watching something, and what are they watching? They're looking at this drum and the baby with the drumsticks. They just know that there is something that's going to happen here. And then what happens? The baby starts drumming. The dog runs away with his flute. But if you look at the drum over here, there's a bird on it. And then even the bird looks kind of shocked and upset in this image, right? Um, here's another image I wanted to show. This was one of my favorite ones to draw. And I think maybe this is the first drawing I made in the book. It's like this crying baby with this red face. I had a lot of fun drawing this because it was so upsetting. You know, the baby is very upset. But how has everyone kind of come together to make the baby feel better, right? So the dog is watching over the dad's shoulder. They put a band-aid on the boo-boo and the donkey has taken out this um, frog stuffed animal to kind of distract the baby from what's happening. The cat's checking out the tambourine because the tambourine is very exciting. I was thinking this tambourine was kind of like a Stevie Nicks tambourine. And of course the chicken has it. And then I would say that this is like one of the most popular spreads. So we have the sheep, which is a Jacob sheep. You, you can tell by the horns is holding the baby. And what has happened over here? What does that line suggest? It's diaper changing time. So they're on the tractor. The tractor has a license plate that says E-I-E-I-O. They're taking care of the baby who's Hands are off right now. And then all of these expressions over here as they're running away with the diaper. And then how is the dog reacting here? Does anyone know anything about the way that dogs um, think about diapers? Dogs are basically really gross. And uh, one of my aunts had a German Shepherd growing up and it would eat my cousin's diapers. Anyway. Um, I love this spread too because, you know, as you can see, you go throughout the book, more and more animals get added. So we have this cow over here and she's standing up, she has her udders, everyone's riding back on the tractor together and everyone starts feeding the baby and taking care of the baby. So we have the dog over here feeding the baby, that donkey's back distracting the baby or making the baby happy with the, um, with the puppet. The cow is cleaning off her hooves. I like to think that at this moment, the cow is like, well, I hope the baby really likes the milk because obviously where does the milk come from? And then the baby gets burped over here. And this is another scene where, so they have like this, like a giant Jenga set or something like that. So they're building it. The chicken is taking out one piece. Everyone is so nervous. The donkey sees that something's about to happen. And then you have this moment where everything comes crashing down. They're basically just trying to keep this baby amused and entertained, but I really think that they're all having a good time the whole time. All right, so now we have even another animal that shows up to help out, and that baby runs the bath. Everyone piles into the bathroom. I like this moment over here because, you know, the dog is helping out. The dog is always so helpful. The dog is helping out by bringing in all of these um, towels. The cat's got the scrub brush. Everyone's checking the water to see if it's the right temperature. The sheep is very interested in the toilet, which I like a lot. They start washing the baby. The baby starts splashing around. They take the baby out and 
um, wrap the baby up in a towel. I think I always thought that this looked the most cozy. They take some baby powder and um, dust it on the baby's butt. And then who we have left over here who got really soaked by the water. It's a soaked chicken. I love that chicken. Okay, and I think that this might be one of the last ones I show you because I like this spread also. So they're in kind of their like living room right now. And I really like these, like the cow and the donkey and the llama over here because I feel like they're sitting sort of like the way that when I would visit my family or spend time with my family when I was a kid, my, fa my family would always be kind of like sitting around a cozy room and I feel like these are kind of like my aunts, like they'd be sitting with their legs crossed or they'd be like very comfortable while there'd be a baby playing in the middle. Someone would be like lighting a fire. Um, and then here comes the bat. And then we have them sharing a book, doing a little performance over here. That boot on the head was a very, very last minute addition. And then we have everyone bringing in more books that the baby is kind of eating and destroying. So if you think about this book, something that I love about this book is it's kind of about what does it take to take care of a baby? What does it take to raise a baby? You know, it takes a lot of people and a lot of help. If this dad was just by himself with the baby all day, I think that he would have a much harder time and it's a lot more fun when you have all of these other animals that are helping out, right? In the beginning, it's really just the dad and the dog, right? Let's go back to that first spread. Other dad's leaving, this dad's here with the baby, they're saying bye, and the dog's coming down the stairs. But by the end, we've got a lot of other animals showing up, right? So it's sort of like an entire community of animals and people coming together to raise baby. Um, so one other thing that I wanted to point out really quickly was if you take the cover of the book off, this is kind of fun too. So this is called the case cover. And what do you have over here? It looks like, it kind of reminds me of that scene where the baby has splattered food all over the place. So you have the llama and the cat cleaning up a mess over here. I think let's flip it to the back. And you have the chicken and the dog. And it looks like the dog has taken the opportunity, like why let good food go to waste? The dog is licking up the food off of the wall. We have some paw prints over here. Maybe those are, I think those are baby hand prints. But if you look at this, there the baby is not anywhere to be seen on this cover. You can open it up like that too so you can see it. The baby isn't anywhere to be seen, but the evidence of the havoc that the baby has caused is all over this thing, right? Okay, cool. So what I wanted to do with you all is pick an animal from this book that you might be interested in drawing. And then we can also try drawing the baby one more time. But you could also, let's see, you can write in the chat. I'll take a look over there and I'll go back to me. Hi. Um, if there is an animal that you really liked in the book that you want to try drawing, you can drop that in the chat if you want. And in the meantime, what I can do is I can show you a couple of what the original art looks like and what I use to make the art. So I think the first thing I should show you is my watercolors because I feel like that's the best way to see how I actually do this. So this isn't the actual palette that I used for Old MacDonald. This is a different palette that I'm using to work on a book right now. But this is basically what it looked like. So maybe you have a watercolor set that kind of looks like this. So it's a bunch of watercolors, but, um, and it's a lot of different colors. I like to pick all of my favorite colors that I use. And you probably, I grew up drawing with watercolors. I'm guessing you've all drawn with watercolors too. But what I do first is I take a pencil I have a pencil right here. I take a pencil and I make all of the drawings for the book. Then I take my set of watercolors and a brush and I go through and I paint the entire book. And then I take a pen, which is basically this pen over here. 
it's um it's a pen that has ink in it and it, instead of having a hard end it has a little brush that you can kind of see over there and um i use the brush to make all of the outlines so at the end of the drawing at the end of what i have at the very end is a piece of paper that's about this big and you can probably recognize this spread let me move the chat out of the way so i can see what i'm looking at um this is the scene where there is the sheep has just discovered that the baby has a dirty diaper and then everyone is sort of coming together to be well they're not actually coming together they're all kind of disgusted in their own ways and are throwing out the diaper um i can show you another one <laughs> that i like and i like this one because it has a lot of details in it and again, like I said, like I wanted to make this book so it really felt like it had just like a ton of details in it. So let me move this in front of my camera. So here is that scene with in the kitchen, right? But I wanted to show because I spent a lot of time in the details of the actual kitchen. So if you look, there's the sink, there's all the stuff in jars, there's like the sink is like kind of old you can get over here. and um there's like even like things like plates hanging on the walls a bunch of spices they have like an old or kind of like vintage looking refrigerator and then if you move over here these are the kinds of chairs that i had in my house growing up it was just like a very typical chair like that and then a bunch of things hanging on the wall okay so now that you've seen like actually what the art looks like um let's make a drawing together so i'm seeing that maybe some people want to draw the cat so i'm gonna hop over to my overhead and let's take a look at the cat together so the cat is actually based on my friend my cousin's cat and her name is vivi and she's kind of like a calico cat and she's very cute. I would say she's almost more like a bunny than a cat. And she lives in Santa Fe in New Mexico. So let's draw the cat just to draw the cat first. And then how would you all feel about drawing the cat running with a diaper? Because I feel like that's like a kind of different thing, right? Okay, so I'm gonna turn my paper this way. So there are a couple of different ways that I draw a cat. And one way that I'll draw a cat, if, if I'm doing a live stream like this, I'll probably just use a pen to draw a cat. But I, I feel like that's like the most impressive way to see it. But if I'm actually drawing a cat for a book, I'll usually start with a pencil first. So let me just be like, I just want to be honest with you all. And we'll just, we're just going to draw it with the pencil first. Um, and I'll tell you why is that sometimes I feel like I will make a drawing and I always say that I like to start with the character's eyes, but I feel like sometimes if you only start with the eyes, you end up sort of like filling up the page and then you don't have any space for the body. So let's do it this way where we draw it, sketch it out with a pencil first, and then um, we can do the second one more like just with a pen. Because I mean, you're not going to learn anything unless I like show you actually how I do it. All right, so let's start with like just like a circle for the head. So just make a circle. And then we have a couple of cat ears, which is just a triangle. And then another triangle. And you want to make them kind of like tall triangles. All right, so there we have like the cat's head. And we know that it's kind of facing like this way, right? We want to have it facing us. We don't want to have it facing away. So the cat's body, if we look at the cat's body in the book, the cat's got kind of like a long body. I like to think of like my cat, um, if my cat were to stand up. So I think of it as kind of like a big bean. So if that's like a pea, that's like more of like a bean shape, right? Okay, so let's stick some legs and I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, like two lines, but you want to bend them a little bit because 
when you stand, I mean, I don't, I don't really, when I think of the way that I stand, I usually stand with, I guess, kind of bent legs. And I think there's something about having bent legs when I'm drawing a character that just gives it a little more life. Okay. And then just go like this to add a couple of arms, just a couple of lines, sticks, and then just double those lines. So just like you kind of bend the arms, you don't really stand. Like when a person is standing, they don't really stand like this, right? I mean, maybe sometimes they'll stand like this, but most of the time, let's say the cat is like excited about something or about to look at something. I don't know. I just like to think of um, bent arms, bent legs. Okay. And now just put some circles at the end of those arms and those legs. But you want these circles to be kind of flatter and wider because they're like on the ground, right? And then we're missing a cattail, so let's just draw that in. Mm, let's see. I want it to be kind of like that. Okay, so we have like basic the basic shape of the cat here. Now we can go in with our pen and let's do start with the ears and draw that line and cover the other ear. And then we'll go like this. So we have the outline to the head. And then we'll do the back and the arm. And then for the paws, I want to have it kind of like this, but let's give the cat like a thumb. So it's just like a little snowball with a little like peanut at the end, I guess. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to show you like another secret. You want to have that line just like straight down. So you see over here, there's a gap and that kind of shows that this arm is further away from us. So do that. And then you're going to do it with this leg too, because this leg is closer to us. See how that's open? This leg is further away. So that's closed. That means that it's on the other side, right? And let's do the feet. It's kind of like, I don't know, uh, Looney Tunes feet. And then the tail. So we're just outlining what we drew. All right, so now we need an expression, right? So let's take, let's do these cat eyes. So the way that I do eyes on all of my characters, except for the baby and the dad, mostly it's like just a couple of circles that are in the middle of the head. The eyes take up quite a bit of space. And do you want to be I like drawing big eyes on my characters and it's just two circles. But really, I mean, if you wanted to go in with your pencil first and put those circles down, but I just like kind of making them big and then I just do a dot in the middle and I try to make the dots. If you look at the dots afterwards, you can kind of tell like, oh, this character is looking at me as opposed to, let's see, let's see if I had made eyes like this, the character would be looking at something else, right? They're looking that way. Or if I made eyes like this, right? The character is looking up. Or if I made eyes like this, what do you think that character's expression is? That character is like looking away, but they're kind of like disgusted or they're, you know, they're not into whatever you're saying, but this cat is like into you. So let's do a little upside down triangle for the nose. And then a cat's mouth, I'm sure you've all drawn a cat's mouth. Just like that, one, two. I'm gonna have this cat smile. This cat is pretty excited to see you. Now, let's see, do any of you have any colors with you? I'm gonna grab a couple of things to draw to put some color in with. I have some crayons over here. I actually don't have any watercolor set up. So this cat, let's take a look at it again. This cat has orange and brown and black. So I'm gonna grab orange and brown and black right here. And I'm gonna move this over a little bit so we can actually see. So Vivi, the cat, is kind of like this. I'm just gonna color in some orange over here. She's got an orange spot on her back too. Let's put that over there. And brown. She's a brown spot on one cheek. And it looks like her tail is brown too.
And then she's got one black ear. Let's color in that black ear. So now I'm gonna leave this up to you all. But maybe put a big word bubble next to her head. And think about what she could be saying right now. You could even add a little opening for her mouth if you like. I'm going to have her saying the babies taking a nap. <laughs> but you can think about whatever you might want to draw over here. Okay, so we have a couple of minutes. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to do something a little more challenging. And we're going to draw the baby running with a stinky diaper because I feel like it's a really fun thing to draw. And there's something about it that I think shows a lot of character expression too. Um, so when I'm making a drawing, I think a lot about the way that characters are positioned. So if you see over here, the sheep is holding the baby but kind of holding the baby at an arm's length right i can show you what i do so when i'm making these drawings sometimes what i do is i'll definitely make the face that the character is making so in the example of like the um donkey over here who's smelling something stinky i was like how would you show that like when you smell something that smells really bad i need to feel what that feels like in order to draw so I think doing something like this, like, oh my God, that smells so bad. Like doing something like this, or like if you smell something, there's a phenomenon where people tend to smell things at the same time, especially bad smells. And it's usually like a fart or something like that. Everyone will tend to, have you ever noticed that, that everyone smells it at the same time? So I think that like, I wanted to have the characters, like the donkey and the chicken, both smelling something and then kind of looking at each other. Like, do you smell what I smell? I just have my pen. And then we have the, um, the cat over here who's just running with the stinky diaper. So let's, I'm gonna show you how I drew. So I, what I basically wanted to say is like, I'm always doing the gesture of the thing that I'm drawing. And I feel like a lot of my drawing has to do with um, like kind of like acting, right? Like you act out all of the parts. So again, let's just start with the pencil because I feel like it's going to be easier. So if you, we look at this drawing over here, what I was trying to capture was the important thing is that we got a stick arm. So just draw two lines with a snowball at the end and draw something that kind of looks like a teardrop. So do you see just like two lines, snowball, teardrop, we have an arm and a stinky diaper, okay? So the most important thing about this drawing is that there's this arm sticking out with a stinky diaper. Get that diaper as far away from me as possible. Get it into the trash. Okay, so let's, say, let's put a trash can over here. Draw a flat circle and then two lines and then a thing over there. So basically like, just some sort of container. You can draw a square if you want, but you want it to be like about to get into the trash. So um, we're going to put the circle over here for the cat's head, because if you look at the cat's head, it's kind of like up here, right? So we got the cat's head, and then we're going to draw that bean body. But again, we want to draw the bean body kind of like away. We, you know, you don't want the bean body like close to the diaper. You want it to be like as far away as possible, right? And if you look at this leg and that leg, you can see that's kind of like kicked up and running, right? So I'm going to do two lines here, that kind of like long oval for the paddle foot. But then see, if you look over here, we want to have the character like kicking its leg back. So she's like got her leg back and away from you. You can see you can tell by that line because she is like running to get that diaper away from her. So right now it kind of looks like a weird drawing, right? Because I think it's because she's missing her other arm. Let's put her arm here. So again, just those two lines and then a snowball over here. 
Because remember how you saw that image of me holding my nose? All right, let's make this a little more cat-like. We're gonna put the ears, one ear here and one ear here. So when my cat encounters something she doesn't like, she puts her ears back like that. So you want two ears pointing back, okay? And let's make her have really big eyes this time, right? With really little dots in the middle. Okay. And then we're going to put the tail. And the tail is also going to be kind of going back like that. Again, it's just two lines and then a kind of like that squiggle. All right. I think we are getting somewhere here. So I'm going to take my three colors again and have them ready to go. And let's take out our pens. I'm going to use actually the brush pen that I used when I made the art for this book. So now it's basically just a matter of tracing, right? We've got the ears, the back of the head. I'm not going to draw that line underneath the cat's head. I'm just going to go straight to the back, through the tail. And you can watch this again later and just really take your time doing it. I'm doing it fast just because when I'm drawing, and I guess this is kind of like the thing with of being a professional, whatever that means, is that I like to draw really fast. So I think there's something when you draw fast, you can really capture the spirit of something as opposed to drawing slow. Oh, you know what? We're gonna put a thumb here. So make that kind of like a crab claw because we want to show that she's like pinching her nose. She's like, oh my god. And then that over there stick arm. So as I'm drawing this, if anyone has any questions they might want to ask, you can type those in the chat. Otherwise, let's draw pizza is over here. With like the dots right in the middle. So I'm making the dots in her eyes really small right now and I'm doing that because I like showing um, if her eyes were really big, let's do it over here, it might show that actually yeah, she's because she's pretty upset there too. But if her eyes are like really big, maybe she kind of like likes it. But I wanted to show that she was in shock. And there's something about like when you're in shock, your eyes get really big, right? And it makes your pupils look a little smaller. So I'm going to do that. And then let's put the trash can. We'll just outline the trash can over here. And something you might want to do is outline, um, take your eraser afterwards and if you want to go back through once your um, ink line is dry you can erase all of the pencil lines and then it looks like you never used a pencil at all so let's see i'm going to put the orange on her right ear to her left ear and she's got an orange spot on her back and just a brown spot on her cheek and her brown tail and one black ear and I think just for like the sake of this diaper we can I feel like diapers have always have like some sort of like weird little like pattern on them to make them a little less like I don't know a little less gross or something like that Let's put some dots on the diaper. And here's another trick that you can use. Because she's running, I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath her foot. So that's like almost like she isn't even touching the ground. She's running so fast. Oh, and I guess if you really wanted to do this too, you can put like a little stink line over the diaper. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, you can send me an email on my website. <laughs> but also, um, I'm going to be saving this on YouTube, and I'm going to be doing another walkthrough of another book I illustrated in a couple of weeks. But um, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for drawing with me. And uh, I really encourage you all, if you have a copy of one of my books, to copy the drawings and to really go into all of the details and find stuff that you think is funny and find stuff that you like and copy those things. Because that's how I learned how to draw, is I found things that I thought were funny and then I copied them 
and eventually made them my own. Thanks so much for joining me, y'all. Have a great day.